Assalamu alaikum, my name is Khudan Ahmad Khan and my topic today is cystodiasis. Uh, so the basically what is cystodiasis? Cystodiasis is a word derived from the word cystode and cystoda is a class of parasitic worms in the plat uh, in the platyhelminthus family. So the most of the species which are uh, which are these parasitic uh, in nature and are most of the worm belong to the subclass Eusystoda. They are ribbon-like worms as adults known as tapeworms. All cystodes are parasitic in nature as we all know and mostly the tapeworm is always parasitic. It will always harm our body and it will always leach out uh, our, our nutrients for its own survival. Uh, okay, so the next thing is that cystodiasis or tapeworm infestation can cause mucosal injury as it's leaching off itself and it has hooks on its face that, that are that is grabbing it to the mucosal ball and it, it changes the intestinal mot motility and it reduces the size of the ileocecal papilla okay so how it is mostly transmitted it, the main reason is the food the when when we uh, administer or when we ingest an uncooked food for example beef or fish or pork so and and if though and if those food are previously affected by the tapeworms and that can seriously cause uh, the passage of these eggs into our body and it can also spread uh, person to person through the contamination of food by the feces of infest infected dogs and um, a large number of these worms reside in the gut and there they release a large number of eggs and although these eggs cannot cause any harmful effects to us but when they pass through our feces they can cause uh, serious damage to the other environment and other animals and other stuff uh, so in humans there are two kinds of cystodiasis. The one is an intestinal cystodiasis, and the other is visceral and somatic cystodiasis. Uh, Thirty. Uh, this is basic uh, knowledge about it. Uh, okay. So the major symptoms that a person uh, endures when it is when it has a tapeworm infestation. So as the infestation is in the intestines, it will obviously cause abdominal pain. But that abdominal pain can also be relieved by eating. Also, there will be distension and flatulence and nausea. Uh, however, sometimes these symptoms are these uh, symptoms are not obvious and they are not observed. But still, there can be a tapeworm infestation. And how is it observed? It is observed by the fragments of the worm which are which are passed in the stool. So that is one of the most more common uh, way to how to diagnose yourself with this tapeworm. And it's better to go and check on with your doctor about it. Okay. So what's the medical treatment? Medical treatment. Okay. The first thing that is obviously a, a major cause of the pain and the distension is the inflammation so uh, to treat the inflammation we all know that the corticosteroids are the first uh, drug of choice so uh, the first uh, corticosteroids are always administrated or administered with the other antiparasitic drugs so i have discussed here two of the more common uh, and more effective uh, antiplatelet drugs one of them is preziquantil preziquantil is an anti uh, an antiparasitic drug and it is an anti which is also known as anti helminthics uh, so the average dose of this drug is 600 mg three times per day uh, okay so one thing that is uh, very distinct about it is that it, ta it tastes very bad so the, the doctor always advise advises to never crush this tablet because that just makes the patient too convulsive and too uh, it's basically it becomes in uh, un the, the patient is not compliable with that with whether the taste is uh, that bad just Okay, so the other thing is that this is category B drug in pe uh, pregnancy. So the, there are no like uh, there are no uh, f uh, one hundred percent directions and other uh, tests done that it, that it is not going to be passed into the baby. Uh, it has an teratogenic effect, but still it is advised to like uh, consider to cons a specialist before uh, administering this drug. Okay, so the other drug is nitazoxanide. Uh, nitazoxanide is uh, is used in the cases of infection with the dwarf tapeworm. Dwarf tapeworm. Uh, it is an antiprotozoal drug and it is also available in a liquid suspension form. Okay, so the, it's the best uh, time to take this drug is to have a habit before a light meal. Uh, also, the main dose of this drug is 500 mg per oral cube, 12 hours, and the do duration of this drug should be three days. So the case study over here that I have uh, mentioned is of a 29-month-old child uh, who resides in the African country Gambia, and he has been brought into the hospital as and is and basically it's a he's a part of a test. So there are basically 30, 340 subjects of children, and the stool is tested. They all vary from six to 35 months in age, 
and it is basically an iron supplementation trial but in the in their feces test and their stool test one of the child was a 29 month old child had a moderate infection of hymenilopis nana so according to this uh, this uh, diagnosis now we have to treat the child for something so so uh, the doctors even though the patient the, the child was not showing any symptoms or was not showing any discomfort but still now that we know that there is an infestation in the in the, in the boy or in the child we start the dose of the prezi uh, prezi quantil which is 20 mg per kg and the and it is asked for the mother to bring in the child back after the two weeks later to consider if the the child is free of the uh, cystode or not so the basic discussion here is that the this most uh, hymenolopis nana is a very uh, rare intestinal cystode but it's most common in the, the warm and arid countries and in the most common or the most uh, common uh, arid countries or warm countries are we all, as we all know are in Africa. So uh, the one uh, fact about this uh, H. nana infection is that it is very most commonly it is asymptomatic and can also be so much, uh, so intense in the in the body that it can pass its eggs 500 eggs per gram of the stool uh, okay so conclusively we can say the, the basic way to uh, basic diagnosis like how it is confirmed that the patient had h nana uh, infection is due to the increased number of granulocytes uh, an increased number of high blood high white blood uh, white blood cells and also the child had anemia so all these signs showed that there is some sort of parasitic infection which is causing all these fluctuations this is because the anemia is obviously because there is a impaired iron absorption and where is this iron going or where is the why is this deficiency being caused it is most definitely caused by the uh, h nana uh, uh, parasite also, uh, when a history of the patient of the child was taken from the mother, and a very prolonged interview was con conducted by the nurses and the hospital staff from the mother, it was uh, she revealed that the child uh, had an irritable behavior and was difficult. Uh, well, it was feeling difficulty in settling down, and also he uh, showed uh, some signs of diarrhea, but it was very occasional and was nothing too alarming for the mother. But still, it all these, all these symptoms are direct indication of a high intensity of H. Nana infection present. In the child so this is my assignment uh, my topic for today and the stories and thank you for your undivided attention Allah Hafiz